Mom. No drama. No bullshit. Previously on Hooked on You, a Dead by Daylight dating simulator. The gang found out the island's not so hidden premise. Are we on a reality show? Is the ocean big brother? Holy shit! They finally found themselves on a date with Huntress. Wee! <laughs> and boy, was it an adventurous one. Huntress has crabs! <laughs> Plus, Nick voiced Tookie Stackhouse. Wow, you ever seen a seagull that big? And Steph voiced the narrator. You're getting good at this game, a uh, sexy, true to life experience. That might not seem vital for you in this previously on, but I wish I had reminded them. Were you doing this stuff? I think you were doing this stuff. I understand with these dating games mm -hmm. that they're trying to make sure that you don't get locked into one path too early. Of course. And they kind of force you into scenarios where you spend time with each of them before you can kind of like pick a path. It's called polygamy. I wanted to have like more of an opportunity to get close to her and there's always people just like barging in. <laughs> Trapper emerges from the water. Is he in slow motion? He's pure thirst. He's Paul Newman on horseback. He's Denzel on the cover of GQ. Can you tell that this game was written by people over the age of 35? <laughs> Isn't Paul Newman the piano guy? No, he's the uh, dressing guy. Oh, I'm thinking of Randy Newman. <laughs> Heard you spend the day at a quaint cottage. That's cute. How about a quaint mansion? Think about how cozy we could get in there in a snowy 10 bedroom chateau. Chateau? Chateau? Chateau. Chateau. One of these pools that is half indoor and half outdoor, but nice and warm throughout. Oh, that does sound nice I to like, be fair. I love an indoor, outdoor anything. That way you can kill a mama polar bear from outside while watching her cubs cry over her body from the inside. And you lost me. Totally lost me. <laughs> like the fucking Sahara down here right now. Wow, Trapper is the real deal. And by real, I do mean really. And by deal, I mean evil. Plus, you want to really hunt for your food for the rest of your life? With me, you get it both ways. Savagery and someone to clean up after you. Sounds nice, huh? I don't like anyone who's like, I'm rich. Like, that's a turn off. Yeah. No one, no one likes someone coming out going like, I have a lot of money. I want to find out that you had a lot of money. And do you know when I want to find out? Just before you die. That life isn't for me. Oh. Is it me? Am I hooky? I, you are now. She wasn't. That life isn't for me, bro. This guy's a total douche nozzle. Try hard much? He's like the turn of the century Pacific Northwest version of a Wall Street bro. Trust me. It tracks. This is like, do we want to like... D flip flop and go back towards Trapper or do we want to double down on the fact that he's not for us? Oh, okay, well I want to double down. I, I don't think he's for us. I like I like I, Huntress. I like Huntress, I like the, the crazy witch the girl. The fucked up witch girl, yep. I think I want to fuck the ocean is my thing. I want to fuck the ocean so bad, Steph. I'm so glad that you and I work together. Thanks, but no thanks. I'm into a quieter lifestyle. I relish my independence and I don't need someone to wipe my butt for me. Nope, that's why we got the ocean. You run back to the huge arms of Huntress. She hugs you tight. So tight you think you feel the life leave your body for just a moment. But it hurts so good. Yeah, it does. Yeah, crush me. You know what? I'm impressed that you stood up to oh me. Gosh, it turned him on more. I appreciate someone giving me their totally honest opinion, even if that opinion makes me want to carve out your liver. Trevor leaves you and you turn to Huntress, walking in slow motion back to the water. It's pretty weird. He's just going to stay in there all night? <laughs> Shall we continue our date? Yeah. Yeah! Back to the cabin! Yes! Wow! So the game gave us an out, like mm. a friend sending mm. us a text, being mm. like, there's an emergency, maybe. Yeah. yeah. But you know what happened? We're the characters in a horror movie. You're in a cabin, alone with a serial killer. You had the opportunity to get out, but we just went straight back in. Straight back in. Oh, we're idiots. We deserve to die. We, we love the pain. Oh, I never wished I was a virgin more. <clears throat> and I believe the voice is... Can you believe that guy? Classic trapper, pulling a move like that. I'm so glad you chose me though. I don't think we've explored all there is between us yet. She winks a bunny masked eye and scoops you up onto her back. Huntress runs <gasps> through the woods. Like you... We're like Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Huntress runs through the woods with you piggyback riding her. The wind ruffles your hair. Animals clear a path for the mighty woods woman as she races by like the lead from that famous teen vampire drama in that one scene where he calls her a spider monkey. Huntress doesn't call you that. <laughs> Eventually. Oh, no, that's me. That's you missed the wee. Sorry. Wee! Eventually, she gently lowers you to the ground and you take in your surroundings. A wooded clearing in the forest. I like to come here sometimes to clear my head and hack up a few cute woodland creatures. Mm, I love that. Foxes are my favorite to slaughter. They think they're so cute and sly, 
but I see right through them. They're just assholes, great with hot sauce. Huntress hears rustling and darts off to find its source, crouching low like an animal. Now you're alone in the middle of the forest. Which way did you come from again? No idea. Your sense of direction is all off. A mel... Melifluid? Melifluous? Oh, melifluous? Melifluous? Landing upon your ears like syrupy honey. Come find me! <laughs> <laughs> you bop Huntress on the shoulder where you find her. She high fives you. You trying to date this young lady or just bro down all day? I know, we bopped her on the shoulder. Yeah, I know. Isn't it, it's funny, isn't it, how five minutes of too long being playful suddenly turns into... Oh, we're just kind of messing around. Now. This is dumb. <laughs> yeah, and that was fun, huh? I just keep trying to relax and have a good time, but that's really hard for me. Anytime I let my guard down, <gasps> something terrible happens. Ooh. What if we let our pants down? <laughs> you gotta pick it. <clears throat> what if we let our pants down? Oh, come on! Oh no! I was trying to have a serious moment. Is it all jokes with you? Oh, fuck. Oh, we did exactly what you said. Yes. We were, we were like messing around for too long and yes. then slipped into the like bro zone. God damn it. Damn it. Oh, sorry. That was the adrenaline of the game. Got me in a mood and I read the room wrong. Oh, look. Claudette and Dwight are back. Oh, of course they are. <laughs> okay. We swear we're here for a good reason this time. Yeah. No one is manipulating us this time. It's just time for dinner. Come get some grub. What a fun day you've been having. I can see it written all over your face. You're shining. And that's not just the remaining anxious sweat from spending an afternoon courting a psycho killer. Just to say. No, no, no. You're really feeling this whole romantic experience. Don't worry. I'll keep your dirty little secrets. Since Trapper seems like the biggest long shot to end up holding onto your heart, he throws caution to the wind and speaks up. We've made it very clear. It's a pretty small consolation prize for being the least loved killer on Murderer's Island, but hey, letting them have this one moment in the spotlight is the least we can do. And heaven knows they won't do any better than that. Interesting. It's like they've made a character that they know everyone's not going to go for, but then they keep pushing them on you. They're just giving you a ninth chance yeah. <laughs> to change your mind. Lamb shank, rare, salt, pepper, no sauces allowed, and serve it with one piece of broccoli so Wraith won't complain. I like broccoli. <laughs> I like broccoli. Yeah, that, that feels right. <gasps> Gives me horrible gas. Dinner will be served shortly, but certain power brokers would like to know about your day. It's the ocean. You've had an interesting day, that's for sure, but how will you describe it to the others? Say too much or too little and it could affect your standing with the group. Today was nuts. We went to Huntress's secret cabin and Killer Crabs attacked us. Yeah, she's, yeah, she, she's, 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 she's fucking she's, into she's those happy. crabs. She's she happy. loves crabs. It's true. I fell asleep to the delicious sound of crunching crustaceans. Mm, that would never have happened on my yacht. <laughs> Fuck hell. off, Trapper. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's the worst. You are toxic at this point. I feel like the trapper is definitely into Bitcoin. <laughs> I grind them up. Much more satisfying way to kill crabs. At least those kinds of crabs. I have a little comb for the other kind. <laughs> we dodged a bullet. Dwight and Claudette bring out dinner. Everyone eats in silence. No one trusts anyone now. and They're all very tired. Oh, wait. No. Sorry, that's a dreary supernatural horror thriller set in Antarctica, not a charming parody dating sim set in an undisclosed tropical paradise. I love how no one ever just stands normally. Yeah, they're all in the middle of whatever it is <laughs> that yeah. is. Like, no one's just like, hi, what's up? Yeah, they're always totally. like, with their, with their butt out somewhere. Particularly because, like, <clears throat> it's obviously that thing where you... Everyone, if you would please be so kind as to follow us to the fire pit, we'd greatly appreciate it. We've been told something big is about to happen. Something that will change everything. You can go willingly or you can go unwillingly. You have no choice. Tough cookies. You take a seat on a comfortable log, feeling the fire's heat against your skin, and wait for the other killers to take their places, wondering who will want to tell a story this time. Will narrator tell a story? I bet they've got a stunningly creative mind. Hey, you think, are they allowed to simply place thoughts in my mind like this? <laughs> Doesn't seem fair. <laughs> this is very good. Oh, cool. And now everyone is looking at you. Uh, so, uh, you know, do something. Should I pick someone to tell a story? Or we could play charades or boggle? Oh, boggle fucks. I love boggle. Um, well, actually, we were thinking, why don't you tell us a story? Sure. I'm game to tell a story. Who the fuck was this? I hope it's a mystery! <laughs> I feel like it was me, and I feel like it was American. Pete, 
Give us a region of the world. He's Belgian. Yeah, he's Belgian. But, but we've done him before. He's a trickster. He's yep. lying about his accent. This is going to upset people who are watching it all in one go. According to Pete, the trickster is now Belgian. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Previously on Trickster's Accent. Hey there, you're looking good, hooky stack house. I've got much, much better things to do than hang out here. I'm famous. He's in a K-pop band. And now, this. I hope it's a mystery. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay, so what kind of story do you want to tell? Romance, adventure, action? I guess if we tell a romance, then it'll get them excited about potential romance. Yeah. I'll tell a romantic story. About two lovers who take poison together and die foaming at the mouth. Or about two strong hunters who meet when they're both trying to bludgeon the same wily wolverine. Uh, Not quite. Uh, It's about my parents. Uh, They (laughs) met at a party in college. That uh, he was hosting, and, and she'd been dragged there by some friends. Tales all just done. They couldn't be more different, and yet, as the night wore on, they were drawn to each other. She made fun of his taste in music, <laughs> and he took an interest in her major, which was women's studies. Uh, and they were married within two months. It's so sweet. Oh shit, we turned on the one person we didn't want to turn on. Exactly, I learned a lot about love from them. If you know, you know. Some people just don't need years to get acquainted with their partner. Love could spark from a mere look across a campfire. Ooh. Who are you looking at at that point? Now you've got their attention. Each killer is furiously attempting to catch your eye from across the fire pit. So intense. (laughs) Okay, that was not a very good story. I don't mean to insult you, but it was actually quite bad. Sorry, but this narrator keeps it real. We can't just end there. Fair. I suppose I could tell a story. I really don't want to. But anything I say is sure to be better than whatever you get out of anyone else in this group. Like all good stories, I stole this one from someone in the past who is dead now and can't do anything about it. It's called The Bride. Uh, technically, I suppose, the fiancé. One winter, a young couple decided that the next spring, they would be married. The two were madly in love and could not wait for the snow to melt so they could join in matrimony and unite their souls for eternity. Per the latest bridal trends, they decided to have their wedding ceremony at the edge of the woods by a beautiful, shabby chic farmhouse. That's what I did. That is what you did. Mm. Together, they spent months planning the details of the wedding. The two created invitations, figured out seating arrangements, and tasted 100 cakes before settling on the perfect one. That's what I did. That's what you did. They chose Illilakoi, by the way. So fancy. Steph's looking up what kind of cake she chose for her wedding. Call the caterer, Steph. Illiloquoi? Was it illiloquoi? It's like a type of passion fruit. It's a passion fruit. Hmm. For a wedding cake? Bold choice. I had carrot cake. I remember. It was delicious. When it came time to figure out the decorations, however, the bride, um, the fiancé, I guess, since she wasn't actually married yet, wanted to take the lead and set the style. After all, her boyfriend had been wearing cargo shorts and open-toe sandals for pretty much their entire relationship, so he was definitely not to be trusted. It sounds like very specific details for someone else's story. Having decided... <laughs> don't make me laugh, I'll lose the accent. <laughs> Having decided on such a lovely natural setting for the ceremony, the fiancé decided that she would create unique floral arrangements from the local wildflowers that surrounded the farmhouse. As soon as the sun rose on the first day of spring, she set off into the woods. Each day, she spent hours mapping out where the best blooms could be and prepared to pick them herself the morning of the wedding so they'd be at the height of their freshness and beauty. Enamored with the incredible variety of flowers in the woods she surveyed, the bride, uh, the fiancé, since they had not yet been married, became obsessed with knowing just how many there were so she could choose the absolute best. When the fateful morning of her big day came, the fiancé told her husband-to-be that she had one final errand before the wedding. Excited for the ceremony to begin, she dressed in her beautiful white gown and set off into the woods to gather flowers. Treading carefully, she followed her route, carefully selecting the best stems and collecting them in a basket. However, when she came upon a once familiar clearing, something was not as she expected. It was more beautiful than it had ever been before. And just on the edge of her view 
was a new bush filled with blossoms so vibrant and colorful she became dizzy just looking at them. But the fiancé ignored her sudden spell and pressed ahead, scooping up flower after flower. And every time she did, she noticed just further ahead, impossibly, even more beautiful blooms. Carried by the sweet fragrance of spring air, the bride, the fiancé, crept farther and farther into the woods until she turned a corner, stepped over a mossy fallen tree trunk, and realized she had been here before. But this wasn't the clearing she remembered, nor at least how she remembered it. The flowers were suddenly overripe, decaying, falling from their stems into festering, moldy piles on the floor. Where bees had been, now only flies buzzed. Where the scene of flowers had once intoxicated her, the odor of mildew now made her sick. She turned and looked back, but the path was dark. Into a shadowy glen, she walked and 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 walked walked and walked and walked and walked and walked and walked that day. As guests arrived at the farmhouse, the fiancé was nowhere to be seen. Her friends, family and love began to look for her, but to no avail. They searched the pasture, the tree line and into the forest, but there were no beautiful wildflowers or young lovers to be seen. Just old dead trees, trampled vines and moss-covered rocks. The fiancé stayed a fiancé for eternity. Always wandering, looking for fresher blooms to clip, but never finding them. <sighs> I don't understand. I'm, I got a little confused throughout the story myself. She stumbled across a poppy field and like got super high. She got fucking high. And then like wandered around until death or something? Yeah, I guess she got intoxicated by the thing and then she's just constantly looking for the best flower. A bit of an anticlimax. I was hoping someone would be like gutted. Yeah, I guess I just wanted them to like... Fuck in a pool of blood. Mm. How is story time? A lot of people like to take pot shots at sequels, but I think every good story deserves a follow-up. When you think it's the end, the sequel is almost never as rewarding as the original. That's why I'm much more of a fan of the episodic style of storytelling. Tell me, Hooky S, if you could delete any sequel from existence, what would it be? God, the tone fluctuates so wildly between fuckfest, sad stories, and now, like, Weird, nerdy... Christian campfire trivia. <laughs> yeah. Dwight, I'm gonna need you to shut your yap trap. <laughs> you know. Because <laughs> uh, we need to get back to that thing that we do whenever we're not on screen. <laughs> okay, you have fun tonight. And try not to <laughs> end up dead. <laughs> we wish we could. <laughs> well, I want to die right now. Oh my God. <laughs> If you could, I don't know, just pick one of us, maybe we could all move on with our lives. Mm. You heard him. Who will it be? Who will you head off with for an evening activity? Um, so <coughs> do we want to choose one of the characters that we've already learned about or... I would have... We haven't done a date with Spirit, right? Like, we've done a date with Huntress. We did Cabin. That's we true. Did That's true. Playing in the woods and shit. Every time we've picked Spirit, it's just to be like, have a conversation with a group. Let's do Spirit. You make for interesting company, and I love the idea of winning over these other killers at all costs, even when I hate the game and the prize. But I had a long day, floating, subverting expectations, <laughs> grinding my teeth as I imagine sweet, sweet revenge. It takes a lot out of me. So don't stop bringing your A-game, all right? It might seem like I hate everything, and getting to really know who I am is an impossible task not worth trying. But too bad. You won't know unless you search deep inside yourself and bring everything you've got. Ah, oh, she's making us work for it. Yeah, God, I love that. And just say the exact right thing at the exact right time and melt my cold heart in an instant. I don't know the rules here any better than you do. See you at the bar, I guess. You arrive at the bar to find Dwight and Claudette both holding cocktail shakers surrounded by a bevy of bottles for assorted boozes. Who's ready to get wasted? <laughs> Well, I don't drink, so not me. You really don't drink ever? Is that like because it will just fall out of a hole in your stomach thing wow. or a... Wow. I don't drink alcohol because alcohol is 
poison of the body and the mind, and I didn't need to act like a fool to have a good time. Then why did you choose a mixology lesson as your romantic nighttime activity? Everyone knows this kind of date is just an excuse to get loaded up on booze and make terrible decisions. Mixology is a real thing, and it doesn't require alcohol to be interesting. I'll have you all know that I worked at a restaurant before I was violently executed. Yes, by your father. On whom you will have your bloody revenge. Right, right, right. Well, so be it. How about you, Hooky S? Do you drink? Booze it up, stay sober. Booze me! If you and Spirit have different dietary restrictions, that means we gotta make two different drinks with two different sets of ingredients. And that's like double the work for the same amount of pay, which is already zero for a job we both hate. What do you say? Would one of you maybe bend your will just a teensy little bit to make life easier on us? No. Okay, your position is firm. I feel you. Hooky ass, be a pal. Oh. I don't think we can force no, we don't. Her to drink no, 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 alcohol. no, that's terrible. Uh, I feel like we have a right to stick with our answer because we're just asking them to work more. Yeah, I would also say just pass me the bottle. We can ask for a side boost. Yeah, that's what I mean. Just like pass me the bottle. We'll make this drink. I'll just be, you know, swilling vodka. What if I did the alcohol free mixology lesson, but you just slid me a bottle of something a little harder to pour on the side yeah. so I can take care of myself. Really coming across like we have a drinking problem. <laughs> Amazing idea. See that, Dwight? That's what a clever compromise looks like. Not sure what that's about, but Dwight seems a little miffed by it. After a deep sigh and an eye roll, he reaches for an expensive looking bottle on the top shelf and sends it gliding down the bar to you. When you pop the top off the bottle, the odor just about knocks you over. You're pretty sure you see a tiny ghost flyer. <laughs> Burn it? Well, that solves it. This is hell after all. I mean, it is funny that we were like, slip us a bottle or something, and they gave us a digestive, like, yeah. bitter, yeah, like, yeah, horrible. Yeah. He didn't give us, like, vodka or something. Totally. Yeah, he gave us, like, um, what was the thing that Bajo made us drink one time when we all went out? Chartreuse! Chartreuse. It was Chartreuse. It was Chartreuse. <laughs> oh, my God. It's <laughs> awful. Awful. So, lovebirds, what drink shall we make? Fancy beer, mm -hmm. zombie, mm -hmm. bloody Mary, dark and stormy. I do love a dark and stormy. How about a dark and stormy drink for my dark and stormy date? Oh. Okay. Oh, she loved that! that I thought she was going to find that cringy, but she totally ate it up. Well, anyone who is this defensive, like, you got to work for it and da 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 Desperately deep down, they just want to be seen. That's all mm. it is. And so it's like we saw her. Yeah. You know what I mean? Please allow us to demonstrate how a dark and stormy is made. First, rum, or in this case, rum extract and a bit of apple juice, mm -hmm. is poured over ice. And then fresh ginger beer is added in. Garnish with a lime wheel. And drink. The end. Do you think you're up to the challenge of replicating this recipe, Hooky S? Rum substitute and ginger beer over ice with a lime wheel. Not sure I appreciate your tone, but yes, you got it. You're a natural, <laughs> a sassy natural. <laughs> uh, you and Dwight might have more in common than, <laughs> don't you dare. Spirit seems to be in a lovely mood as she sips her dark and stormy. She's not even rolling her eyes at your petty behavior. On cue, a literal dark storm begins to make its way in from the ocean. You taste your own dark and stormy as you watch the clouds approach. It's quite refreshing. Isn't this fun? Honestly, it's the most drama-free fun I've had since I got here. And since you picked a simple but delicious drink, we've got plenty of time left to relax. Yeah, we do. Want to make out a little? Yes! Yeah, I do. You breathe in a sip of your drink and immediately <laughs> begin coughing before you can get a yes out. Oh, God, this is so <laughs> lame, so lame. Why are we so shit? Oh, we're so bad at this. Okay. Lightning strikes a palm tree on the beach and it immediately starts a fire. The activity ends abruptly as Claudette and Dwight usher the two of you away from the bar. Come on! What the fuck? Oh. I reckon we are never going to hook up with these people. Do you reckon this game was... I reckon this game is a troll. I reckon, I reckon this game was made by the wait until sex at marriage lobby. No, I think... You don't believe that? I think that? this whole thing is a troll and at the end, <laughs> we fuck the ocean. Walked and walked and walked and walked and walked and walked and walked.